The average age at first marriage is 25 for women and 27.8 for men in the U.S. If the standard deviation for women is four years, what is the probability that a random selection of 32 women have an average age at first marriage between 26 and 27? Okay, so the first key phrase I see here is, what is the probability? So I know I'm working on a probability problem. If it's a probability problem, um, the next question I want to ask is, you know, what, how, what's the distribution? Is it bell-shaped in distribution? And when I read through this, I don't see anything about that. I don't see anything about normally distributed. So I want to look to see if there's another way around that issue. Because it'd be nice if it was normally distributed. Then we could do our bell curve and use the bell curve to find the solution. Um, but I do see this, that it's the probability that a random selection of 32 women, 32 women, have an average age at first marriage between 26 and 27. So they're looking for the average to be between 26 and 27. This problem is a probability problem about an average, an average that's derived from 32 women. Well, an average for 32 women is x bar, right? That's, in this case, they're talking about x bar for a group of 32 women. It's x bar if it's an average that's from a sample, right? And 32 women clearly is not the population of women, so I know that it's not mu, right? This average is not mu, it's, it's the x bar, right, for the 32 women. And they're asking, what's the probability that that average would be between 26 and 27, given the other information in the problem? Well, if we're dealing with x bar, we have something called the central limit theorem, and that tells me that essentially x bar is normally distributed, or at least approximately normally distributed, when the sample size is greater than 30. So if I see this sample size of 32, it's an indication to me that if the problem is about x bar, I can use the bell curve. And that's really the whole thing here. So basically we have a probability problem, and we have a sample size greater than 1, and we're talking about an average. So in this case, I can do the bell curve safely. So let's go ahead and do that. I'll put my little bell curve tube up, tube, tool up here. Sorry. Draw the bell curve. And now label its mean, standard deviation, etc. So when we come to this part of it, you know, if I just went through the problem, I'd say, well, they told me that what? Uh, the average age at first marriage is 25 for women, 27.8 for men. So I have two averages here. Which one's important for us? We're talking about 32 women and dealing with their average. So certainly I'm interested in the women more than the men here. So I'm going to look for the 25, right? The average age at first marriage is 25 for women. So I'm going to put 25 here. I want to be careful now. This problem is not about x like we normally have. We normally have a z-axis, 0, and then an x-axis where x represents the value for an individual, right? So it might be an individual woman's age at marriage, right? But here we're talking about a sample of 32 women, and we're talking about the average being between two numbers. So it's not x that we're dealing with, it's x bar actually. And we see that because it doesn't say the probability that a random selection or a randomly selected woman, right? It doesn't just say woman, as in one woman, it says 32 women. So that's an important key phrase. You have to pay attention to that when the problems say, what's the probability in this section? You want to be watching to see if it's the probability that a single woman has an average age between these two numbers, or whether it's more than one woman. If it's more than one woman, you know that this is x bar. That also means that this has to be the mean for x bar. And that'll mean that this is the standard deviation for x bar. Now, when it comes to the mean, it doesn't matter because the mean doesn't change. The mean for x bar is the same as the mean for the original data set, so it'll be 25 no matter what. But we have to be careful here, and this is the major change in the problem. The only difference here is that when we go to get the standard deviation, they said if the standard deviation for women is 4 years, so we know that it's going to be 4 normally, it will no longer be 4 for this problem because we're going to have to divide it by the square root of n, so we're adjusting it. In this case, the n in this problem is 32, so we're going to divide by the square root of 32. So this is the big difference, that when we do the standard deviation, we have to take the one they give us, the number they give us, and divide it by the square root of n because there is a sample size here. Right? It's not one woman, it's 32 women, so we have to put that into the problem. And that's going to change things, of course. All right, so the mean is at 25. And then we're going to put the two numbers they asked about. It says the probability the women will have an average age at first marriage between 26 and 27. So 26 is on the right of 25. 27 is on the right of that. And we're talking about between those two numbers. So I'm going to go ahead and draw lines on the curve where those numbers exist. And then shade in between to represent 
the area that I'm looking for. So I'm looking for this area in between. So my goal next is to go to my Z table. Remember, once I have my drawing done and it's shaded, I'm supposed to go to my Z table, but I can't go there until I have Z scores to look up. I can't look up these ages, they're not Z scores, so I have to convert them first to Z scores. So let's do that first for the 26. Remember that Z is equal to X minus the mean over sigma, right? Well, here we have x bar minus the mean for x bar minus sigma of x bar, but that's really just notation, right? I mean, you can plug that stuff in, but essentially it doesn't really change what we've been doing since before. If I want to convert this number 26, I put 26 down. I take the mean from up here, 25, and then I divide by this quantity, 4 divided by the square root of 32. Just be careful when you do that. If you do it in your calculator, put it in parentheses so you don't make a mistake. Let me show you how this would be done in your calculator if you want to do it all at once in your calculator. You would actually use parentheses and say 26 minus 25, close the parentheses, divided by open parentheses, 4 divided by the square root of 32, close that, close it one more time, and then you get the answer 1.41 when rounded off to two places. So we'll have the answer 1.41. An alternative way to do it is to just work out this as a decimal, use several decimal places, put it at the bottom, and you're good. Okay? All right, so the first number is 1.41. The second z-score is going to be 27 minus 25. Of course, that gives you 2. You don't have to work that out in your calculator, but um, at this point, then we just divide by 4 divided by the square root of 32. And once you've done that, you end up with the answer 2.83, 2.83. Okay, so now you have your two z-scores. We're going to look them up. Remember, when we look up 1.41, we're going to get the area from here to here. That's not the area we want. And when we look up 2.83, we're going to get the area from here all the way to there, which is not the area we want either. It's all of what we want plus a little extra. So remember, when you have this kind of a drawing, you have to subtract the two results that you get from the Z table. So let's go to the table now and look up 2.83 and 1.41. So in this problem, we're looking up two Z scores. We're looking up 2.83 and 1.41. Let's go get the 2.83 first. Let's move the table down here. I'm looking for the first two digits, 2.8. So there I see the 2.8 row, and I'm going to go over until I get to 3. So it's 2.80, 2.81, 2.82, 2.83. So the first number we get is 0.4977. So that first area is 0.4977. All right, so now we have to look up 1.41. Let's bring the table back down, and we can see that 1.4 is about here. And that first position is going to be 1.40 and then 1.41. So we have the answer 0.4207. Okay, so let's put our two probabilities now on our drawing. The 2.83 gave us 0.4977. And the smaller of the two, the 1.41, gave us 0 0.4207. So in order to get our final answer, we have to subtract those. So 0 0.4977 minus 0 0.4207. If I do the subtraction here, I get uh, 0 here, 7. 2 from 9 is also 7, and then 0 again. So we get the answer 7.70% or 0 0.0770 as a decimal. All right, so our final answer is the probability that the average height is between 26 and 27 is equal to 7.70%. Another way to write it would be to say the probability that x bar is less than 27 but greater than 26 is equal to 7.70%.